As a sculptor, I'm used to commemorating the celebrated and well-known. This commission for Barclay Homes is quite different. This commission commemorates the working people of Britain's canal. I empathise with the physical nature of the work and how it relates to the way I work in clay. The didactic nature of sculpture will show everyone that 250 City Row is rising from the ashes. On my very doorstep, I have a canal basin for turning narrowboats. It is a maquette of the site in London. Everything is here for me to start making the sculpture. Now you may ask why I'm unwrapping this, but clay, which is water-based, easily dries out. So it's got to be well wrapped up in polythene. The canals are an amazingly democratic workplace. The women worked alongside the men. And these women were incredibly tough. The sheer physical nature of the work was such was hugely demanding on their bodies. Therefore, in doing these three commissions of this barge woman being the first, I think it was important to show a sense of heroism about their ordinary, humdrum, incredibly hard-working lives, because a lot of it has just disappeared. You know, you might evidence it a little bit in museums, but, you know, we don't really see what it was like. There are a few memories of people who worked canals during the war, when, again, canals became important. But again, by then, canals or the barges were very often motorised. So that was different. You know, one goes back to a time when they were horse-drawn, uh, and it was quite a different thing altogether. The making process always starts with making a maquette, which is a small model, usually in a very soft modelling material and that allows you to actually experiment, to change shapes, to change position. But essentially, you know, here we have a figure who's actually pulling on a rope. So I can model the figure, get all the detail more or less right, before I then proceed onto a larger model. When I get to this stage of moving up to the next scale, or the full scale, I have to think about creating an armature, which is a very hard physical skeleton, if you like, within the modelling mass of clay. So this is done usually with metal. Here, on this example, I've chosen to place most of the armature, or the ex supporting armature, outside the figure. And that gives me the ability to move the limbs around if I want to change them. Obviously, once the full-scale piece has been finished and approved by the client, then the whole process of moulding begins. And basically, what one is doing is creating a negative sculpture. And this is the mould. And here, you see, this has been covered with silicon rubber. And there are several coats of this applied to the figure by brush. And basically, the silicon rubber will pick up every detail. Every thumbprint of my hand will be on this sculpture, on the surface. 
And then once this is complete in terms of the rubber, there's the final coat to go on, which will be a, a sort of thick tropic coat, which is, you know, a, a sort of, um, you know, a harder, stiffer rubber. Then a casing will be put on, which is out of fiberglass. And this casing is in sections, which allows basically the whole mould to come apart. So it's a three-dimensional jigsaw, and it all comes apart. Once that is finished, the process of encasing this is finished, then it is pulled apart, the rubber is taken off in section, and then the clay is just thrown back into the clay bin and recycled. Armature is broken down and perhaps may or may not be used. So that's the process of moving from the small wax maquette to the full-size piece to taking the mould. Then obviously once we have the mould, that goes off to the foundry and the whole process of bronze casting then begins.